Hey everyone, how's it going? This is the bald metal nerd coming at you with the first in a series of videos that I'm going to make. I don't know how long the series is going to take me to make, nor do I know how long the gap is going to be between videos. So keep that in mind. I'm going to call this the Not So Handyman's Guide to Finishing Your Basement. Right? Um, so. I'm going to break this down into every part that's relevant for me. If I find any uh, resources that help me, I'll put them in the uh, you know description box below. So step one is kind of you know getting the lay of the land slash planning, right? So one thing uh, as you're getting the lay of the land before you start preparing to do any work, obviously one pretty important part is is framing, right? And we're actually standing where, uh, you know, I'm going to put a wall here, perpendicular, you know, going across. So, obviously, that's going to be an issue for these cables running here, right? Uh, these are just Cat5 cables that feed my IP cameras that I have on the outside of my home. So, I don't want to damage those. So, what I'm going to have to do, unfortunately, I'm going to show you guys the process of what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to basically... <laughs> You know, take all of these cables down, right? You get the idea. And all eight of the cables eventually, uh, they converge here and go into, well, you can't see the NVR. It's, it's obscured by some stuff. But basically the DVR that records, um, you know, footage from all of my cameras. So... Essentially, what I'm going to have to do is disconnect the cameras from the uh, device, <sighs> you know, and basically unhook them from the wall, you know, the ceiling, and I'm going to have to drill some holes going across here, you know, running them through to essentially make it to where I can frame the walls without worrying about damaging this, so... That in and of itself is going to be a little bit of a job. I've already started the process with another cable a bit uh, because this cable hanging down right now that you're looking at, this coax, uh, this is what actually feeds, feeds currently feeds my cable internet. I might uh, switch to fiber to the home, but we'll see. I'm not, that's, that's something that's coming up. But uh, yeah, this currently feeds my internet connection, so obviously I'm going to have to route that. And you, you can see I've already start, started the process of loosening it up some. Um, previously, it was running alongside. Now, again, I've done a very small amount of work here. Uh, this coax cable that has been cut, uh, that was previously feeding uh, the DISH network. Uh, install that was in my home previously, but I use YouTube TV now, so I have no need uh, for, you know, any traditional TV like that. So the only coax cable I still care about carries the internet. Um, so yeah, that's going to kind of be a big step of it. Um, another thing that I'm going to consider doing is, you know, uh, I'll show you, uh, hopefully I can show you on one thing in particular that is noticeable. Um, if I see any, how can I put this, imperfection in the wood like this, I might try to do some wood filler or whatever. Just try to, you know, uh, do that a bit. Um, also, another piece of what I'm going to do uh, before I frame, all of this obviously is before I I get a single 2x4 and do any framing whatsoever. Uh, this pipe, I'll clean it. You know, basically I'll just clean, right? Clean up as much as I can, get rid of as much dirt and debris as possible. Now, um, one thing that I saw uh, in videos is a lot of people recommend, as, as far as insulation goes, um, not having, you know, this type of insulation up here because they say, well, it can cause moisture and all that. Now I've removed a couple of these fiberglass panels and this wood is dry as a bone. 
I didn't expect that. I mean, this house is was built in 2002, so it's actually yeah, it's 20 years old now. And uh, I guarantee you that's been here as long as the house has been here. And uh, that is dry as a bone. Didn't expect that. So I'm debating whether I'm actually going to um, replace these, replace this or not. I, I'm undec completely undecided on that fact. Um, so the only other thing I'm going to do before I frame well, is related to the wall. So... As you can see, looking at uh, the concrete wall here, there's lots of little divots, dips, whatever, holes. I am going to, everywhere I plan on framing on the outside wall, I'm first going to fill it in with this. And uh, after that, I'm going to buy a masonry product uh, that you can use on, you know, for... Uh, to basically do a water seal on this, so I'm gonna get some of that. And then I may or may not get some, uh, you know, insulation panels that Owens, Cor Owen Cor Owens Corning is the best known one. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do that yet or not, but hey, you never know. I'm still kind of on the fence. And then, finally then, I'll be ready to frame. So I'm gonna actually do some of the work and uh, come back and show you guys the results. So I will see you in a while, little while. Okay, folks, here we are actually some months later. We're in July at this point. And I started filming or the first part of this video in April. And I'm going to show you guys uh, some work that I've done. Uh, as you can see, I've rerouted uh, the cables. I did drill some holes through... Um, the wood for uh, I had a little reminder there from my helper who you'll be seeing soon enough and I rerouted the cables didn't do the most clean job but it doesn't matter it's not gonna be visible now one thing I did learn is that these cat 5 cables are a little more resilient than I thought because in my infinite greatness when I was restapling these uh, to the floor joists I uh, accidentally impaled Two of these wires, yet they all still work. So that's a good thing. I'm not gonna try. I'm gonna try to never move these again. I think uh, with the way that I rerouted them, I'll be able to. Uh, but I have accomplished a lot, and I'm gonna bring the camera down here. And as you can see, this area is now empty, completely empty. Uh, this area has some stuff, but that's a little bit of a reveal. Oh well, jumped ahead. But I cleared out. The areas, the main accomplishment that we, that I just uh, did over the weekend with the help of my daughter who is right here waving, and please, you don't have to stay entirely, for the fir I'm very proud of her because for the first time ever, instead of being a big hindrance and kind of a pain in the butt, she was actually a pretty big help in getting, uh, getting these walls waterproofed. Um, I did all the brushwork, she used the roller, and she did help a lot in the brushwork too in the final part. She is now 12 years old, so she is growing up very quickly. I can't believe how big she's getting. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, the, uh, as you can see, the difference between where I'm not going to be, you know, uh, putting up insulation versus where I'm going to be putting up insulation. So, I have something to say for them. About what? What we did? The work? Yeah. Go ahead. When you come down to your basement, it's going to stink. Well, what, you mean after the paint? Yeah. All right, well, I think a lot of people know about paint smell, but <laughs> thanks for the tip. So anyway, what I wanted to show you guys is, as you can see on this wall, there's lots and lots of little kind of fine holes and cracks and all that. So I... My dad came up with a smart idea, and I'm so <laughs> mad at him after that. Okay. Except forever. Please stop interrupting. Anyway... <laughs> So I patched, obviously I took some patching concrete and I patched all of the holes and stuff. But, uh, and as you can see, coming along this wall here, it's all very nice and smooth. And I did use the waterproofing paint, obviously, on the walls. Uh, where, behind, behind where that I'm gonna put the insulation on, right? Uh, I used the dry lock extreme. There will be a link to that in the video description. Uh, I bought the five gallon bucket and we used, oh, probably four out of the five gallons in there. 
Granted, it was only two walls, but the paint was applied very, in a very thick way. Now, if we get really close up to one of these walls, as you can see, there aren't very many fine holes on this. Like, there, you'll see a few here and there, but compared to the way it was, a lot less. So the technique she was talking about, what I did to really limit uh, the holes in this, uh, actually, and I'm surprised that it worked, is I would uh, basically saturate a brush in paint, and uh, this was basically the third coat, right, when, when this was happening. So I would, as the paint brush was saturated, I would push against it on the wall with my hand, and basically it would cover up uh, those smaller holes. It was really good at that because if I had not done that, there'd be a lot more holes than what there currently are. No, this isn't a thousand percent, but compared to, you know, just completely open porous walls, it's a big improvement. This was not meant to be like a thousand percent stoppage, but I'd say we're looking at a much, much bigger stoppage. There is one other part I wanted to show you guys with the painting here. Oh, and thankfully the paint that, you know, hit the floor and I just stepped in wet, the last bastion of wet paint because of course I did right there, naturally. So what I wanted to show you, I'll have to clean that off when I'm done. So I'm going to just limp over here. Fun stuff for the video. So what I had here is I had little cracks in the, uh, found in the floor where I think water might have been coming up because my daughter actually noticed some water that had uh, accumulated in this area. So what I did is I tested everything in the house. I tested, uh, I turned on all of the water in the house at one time, the hose, everything. No water leaked. Ran several, uh, that's where I'm looking for, loads of laundry back to back in the washing machine, no leak. So. I, I really investigated the floor where this water was and saw a few cracks, sealed them up, and as you can see, well, I put the paint down there too. Thanks, kiddo. And Okay, folks, uh, as far as insulation goes, um, I just completed insulating uh, my rim joists uh, where, you know, basically by where the framing is going to go, and as you can see, uh, I cut the uh, thick insulation board down and I just used the foam sealant around it. No, it's not very attractive, but it really doesn't matter what it looks like. And then, of course, after you're done, uh, you can just put, because uh, I, you know, did obviously the same thing to every uh, part of the rim joist, so obviously all you gotta do after you're done is you can just, you know, put the uh, insulation, the uh, fiberglass insulation in front of it, and that's basically what it's gonna look like all the way down. I did that. And uh, you saw a sneak peek for the next part, which of course is the foam board insulation on the walls. I gotta get that attached, tied up, looking nice and tidy, and that way you'll see what that looks like. So uh, one thing I wanted to note on uh, doing this type of insulation work, get more, a lot more than you think you need. I needed six cans, literally six cans of the stuff, just to do um, basically all that from over here and then of course there's that other wall that you can't see in this frame so whatever you think you need just double it it's not that expensive per can it's like three something four bucks a can it's not that much money just buy more because you don't want to be like me and have to go out and uh, get more because you didn't have enough so okay folks uh, here we are the insulation as you can see is uh well the foam board is fully installed on the walls um now i am going to make a little note here about these pieces um this obviously is a tie that was sticking out from the wall um thankfully i was able to easily penetrate uh, i said penetrate the foam board with those ties and basically so there wasn't any sort of uh, um What's the word I'm looking for? Opening. Uh, I just sprayed the foam, uh, the good stuff foam, or great stuff foam into uh, the holes, essentially. It basically sealed those up to make sure they would still work as, like, you know, as intended, right? The moisture, uh, vapor barrier, and all that. So, 
yeah, it, it, this will still work as is. Uh, could it have been a little bit better? Sure, but you know, you kind of learn each time you do this. Now, I did try, to be fair, I did try to cut these off the wall. I didn't just initially start by doing this. I attempted to cut these off with a grinding disc on my rotary uh, tool. And, well, I just ended up ruining the grinding disc. <laughs> did, didn't even manage to get one of these cut off. So I know, I'm sure there is a way to get rid of this. A hacksaw certainly would have done it, but I honestly just was not willing to put in the amount of time and effort to get those things uh, removed because, uh, you know, you can easily work around these. And as far as, you know, where the studs go, you can like, you know, measure them out. You do, you know, every six, you can just put them next. Because these are actually every two feet apart, right? So with with studs, you can easily just not have the stud be where these are. So really, they're not that much of an impact overall. Hence why I didn't spend a huge amount of time trying to uh, get rid of them. So, but yeah, this is what the finished product looks like. It's not perfect, obviously. Um, but it's really good. And the old saying, don't let perfect be the enemy of good, really applies here. Um, it is much better than what, you know, at least thermally and moisture and vapor, it is much better. <laughs> A huge improvement over what it was. It's just none of this is actually going to be visible when the rooms were finished. It's, uh, how can I put this? Less than desirable appearance really doesn't matter because after the walls go up, you're never going to see these again. So it really doesn't matter what it looks like. So there's that. So obviously, um, another thing here is you can just see how empty, obviously, I've, I've managed to keep this area very empty. And I do apologize for all of the long jump cuts uh, that I have between these because I'm not making these, all the parts of these videos were uh, filmed at re very different times. Right now, uh, as I'm recording this, this is mid-August that we're in. So, um, yeah, so time has definitely passed in between each one of these. So, as you can see here, just more of the same. Um, I'm going to have to, you know, before I go to frame, there's going to be a little bit of work to do. I'm not going to bother showing it because really all it's going to boil down to is remo removing a few things from this area, uh, cleaning it up just a little bit. It won't look all that much different than it does now when I am ready to frame. Uh, I will get, obviously... Uh, the lumber in here and all that, I will more than likely uh, get the lumber at probably Lowe's or Home Depot, just depending on, you know, um, who will give me the better deal. And as far as, uh, and as you can see, where the holes were uh, around with the foam board, obviously I couldn't go exactly where the sewer pipe was. So as you can see, I just use a ton, just use a ton of that great stuff to fill in in between basically where I could um around that pipe you know but it's covered the point is i made sure not to leave any stone uncovered now i didn't have very much left over from all of this i did a really good job of basically figuring out what materials i would need i will talk about that in the very very final part of this video where i talk about materials and my cost up to this point and all that because my overall goal is to try to keep the the co entire cost of this under ten thousand dollars I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that or not. If I go a bit over that, it's okay. Uh, but 10000 is kind of, quote, unquote, my target. We'll, we'll see kind of where I end up at the end of this, though, because uh, you guys are going to be along for the whole ride, and we'll definitely be talking about costs and all that all along the way. Um, as of right now, I think this was around 800 bucks for all this, but, again, I will uh, we'll talk about that more in the part where I actually talk about this. The most significant thing I wanted to show you guys, though, that is left over is I have three of the um, the thicker foam boards left. And um, with just one of these, I was able to do the rim joists uh, for essentially, you know, all of this, right? I was able, basically everywhere you see the foam uh, insulation, or I'm sorry, the foam board, the rim joist are obviously completed above. In fact, they go a tiny bit further, maybe like one space over each past where it is uh, for the rim joists on either side. So with the three that I have left, I'll easily be able to finish the rest of the rim joists in my home. Uh, and that's probably exactly what I'm going to do. Now, I won't be doing that until um, kind of, uh, you know, 
this rest of this construction is finished because I don't want to have to wrestle with all the crap back there and all that and try to do the rim joists. Uh, so, yeah, it's just going to have to wait till this rest of this project is done, but it's definitely on my radar for afterwards. Now, whether I will, you know, insulate the rest of the walls, you know, where, where there, because obviously where there's not foam board, all that's going to remain unfinished, right? Now, am I going to bother with water sealing it and putting the foam board up, you know, on the rest of the basement that's not going to be finished? I don't know, truthfully. Uh, I may get around to it eventually, but I could see it being some time, <laughs> you know, after... It definitely won't be as quick as I finish the rim joists afterwards, that's for sure, if I ever do it at all. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. That's, that's maybe a few years from now if I'm really feeling it, because it's not exactly a giant priority. But, um, yeah, that's it for now. Uh, enough babbling. I hope this part was at least informative for you guys, showing... That it can be done. And yes, the amount of labor that this took. Uh, I really started working on everything. And what I mean by work, starting to work on it. I started sometime in April. Which uh, basically boiled down to me. Uh, you know, basically the first step was just obviously getting all the junk out of the areas of the basement where I wanted to finish it. That was obviously step one. Duh. Right? Uh, and then of course just all the prep work. All of this. Basically, I'd say four months of very intense prep work that I did now. Did I do it constantly? No. But uh, I have to fit this work in between, you know, the rest of my life, uh, leisure activities, all that, my family vacations. So that's why it took so long just for me to do this amount of work. Um, now, with the next step, framing, is it going to take, you know, four months from now till you know, the framing is finished? I don't think so uh, because I'm going to have my father-in-law help me with the framing uh, now I got to measure and all that and figure out what I need, but that's all part of the next video when I talk about framing. So anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to cut this and we'll come back. I'll talk about, uh, you know, m the materials that I use and everything, cost, all that. And I will talk a very slight amount about next steps. So see you guys momentarily. So obviously, uh, this video goes a long way towards explaining, um, the lack of music related content uh, that's been on this channel. Clearly, uh, this project that I'm working on is so large in scope that it's basically dominating uh, most of my spare time, right? It's just taking a huge chunk of time, hence why I'm not making nearly as many music based uh, video, music topic based, or even quantity of videos as what I usually make. But this is the reason why this uh, gigantic project I have in front of me. It also goes a little bit towards explaining partly why this room looks the way it does because uh, I had to bring in a number of things from the rest of the basement into this room to make room to where I could you know fully uh, do the work so that's partly why this room looks like crap not the entire reason but it, it, it's a good portion so anyway now that I got uh, the pleasantries out of the way we're gonna break down costs of each item of what I've done so far and um, we're going to talk about why I needed each item. And we're going to talk a little bit about what comes next. So anyway, um, the first item that I used, uh, and I'm going to try to do this chronologically in the order that I used the items. Uh, so when I first started, the first item that, you know, came out of pocket that wasn't just my labor, of course, was just, you know, like the concrete patch, you know, the dab ready made uh, concrete that I could put on the walls to patch the small holes and all that. Oh, and I also want to apologize for the bad cam camera angle on this in the reflection of my glass. I have to refer to my spreadsheet that I have made uh, to be able to do this part of the video. So, sorry. Anyway, uh, the concrete patching, I had to use basically two buckets of it. for or They're incredibly small buckets. $10 each uh, to patch all of the small holes and cracks and all that. So, my total out-of-pocket for that, $20, right? Times two. Or $10 times two. So, there is that. And then after... That happened, of course, I had to use the etching stuff on the concrete to get the concrete suitable, you know, for the masonry product on there. Uh, so I bought the etcher, and I mixed that into like a gallon of water, and the etcher itself was like 10 bucks. All right, so not a huge amount of money. So, so far, up to whopping $30, right? Now, um, this is where it started to get a little bit more significant uh, as far as cost goes. I then bought my five gallon uh, bucket of the Dry Lock Extreme, and that cost about 170 bucks. It's currently 172 on Amazon, so clearly we're up over 200 bucks at that point 
uh, when I actually, you know, water sealed the, uh, the walls with the paint. So after that, the next cost I had um, was the half inch foam board that I used on most of the walls. And I bought uh, 10 sheets of that. Um, and they're currently about $28 each. So that $280 alone just for the, you know, smaller foam boards, right? And then the uh, large, the, the thicker foam board that was an inch and a quarter, two inches was $40, much higher R value, obviously. So for the rim joists, and clearly that was worth it. So there you go. Uh, the uh, great stuff uh, foam that I had to use on, uh, I use it obviously on the rim joists and uh, for everything else, but obviously that had many applications that I needed to use the great stuff for. I used about 12 cans of that, and currently you can get 12 cans of that for $70 on Amazon. This is all, all of the materials that I used, by the way, are going to be linked in the video description below. Um, the uh, next item that I used was the uh, Lockite construction adhesive, and I got 10 uh, tubes of that for, uh, you know, for use there, about $5 each. So it was about 50 bucks, roughly 50, 60 bucks with tax. Um, because you definitely need, you, now you can get by with using less of the adhesive on the foam board to attach it to the walls, but I recommend being fairly generous with it because you want, uh, your foam board to be very securely on the wall. You want just half on there, maybe bowing. You want it as flat against that wall and adhered as well as you can. So being generous, I used almost an entire tube on every single one of those, uh, every single one of those foam boards. And uh, the last, uh, yeah, so that, that's basically it. Um, so my total cost, uh, when I did the math, uh, is 642, but I felt like I spent a little more than that. I feel like I spent about 800. That's my guesstimate, but numbers suggest 642. So we'll say between 650 and 800 is what I spent so far. That's a decent amount of money, not gigantic, um, you know. And obviously, the next steps are um, basically cleaning, recleaning again. Obviously, a little bit, not very much. And then, of course, I'm going to be buying. Well, then I'm going to measure where the stuff is going to go, and then, of course, do the math to figure out how much I need. So. That is pretty much it. I hope uh, this long and sprawling part one of this gives you some insight into all of the work that goes into prepping before you even start to frame, right? Before what most people think of construction even begins is a huge amount of work. And uh, I'll be talking about framing and all that, like basically measuring and figuring out how much frame you need in the next part of this video, right? So anyway, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys like this. As always, live long and prosper, keep on rocking, and I'll see you soon.